welcome to a new episode of the New Leaf Podcast. My name is Carmen and this is my podcast about knitting, crocheting and my journey as a knitwear and crochet designer. Um, so welcome back. Uh, luckily the sun or the light has decided to join us as well. It was looking really gloomy this morning but um, I think lighting is okay for a podcast episode as it really wasn't last time so I'm really happy about that um, I have a lot of things to show you in this episode and I am really excited because I got a lot of things done <laughs> um, so I don't know if you've seen it, but I did a little poll on this YouTube channel, so it should have popped up somewhere, uh, asking you which of the whips I showed in my last episode, uh, so the Stephen West mystery knit along, my Christmas socks, uh, my crochet reindeer, which of those you would have me see finished first, or you would like me to finish first. Uh, or option four was to just, no, nothing, we want you to cast on all of the things. And actually, let me check back because when I last checked, you were all about the Christmas socks. Like it had over, um, I don't want to update. No, <laughs> it had over 50% of uh, votes. So let me just check uh, my channel, community. Yeah, oh, okay. So I did. You, you cannot see that. Uh, I did a little poll. Um, I had uh, 69 votes in total and 48% wanted to see the Christmas socks finished first. 14% voted for the Stephen West mystery knit along. 12% uh, for the sleeping reindeer amigurumi. And 26% for nothing. We want you to cast on all the things. <laughs> uh, so I thought it was really funny. I, I might do more of those polls. So, I have actually maybe achieved the impossible. I know. Uh, well, you don't know yet, uh, although you might have guessed uh, from the intro. In this bag, ladies and gentlemen, is... <laughs> I've been watching too many movies. Um, it's the completed finished pair of socks with my Christmas trees. They are finished! Oh my goodness. Like, can I get an applause, please? Um, these have been three or four years in the making, which, as you know, you know how it goes. You knit on it for like a month and then you chuck it in a corner because, in my case, it didn't fit. And then, you know, throw a temper tantrum for two years and uh, then finally get back to it. And that's how it went uh, with these. Um, but uh, earlier this year, I decided to finish the first sock, which I did during the Christmas is Coming Mal that I hosted together with Carrie um, of Show, Show Real Studios. And then, I, you know, I finally got to finish the first sock after you know years and then I cast on oh there's hairs on this and then I cast on for the second sock immediately because yeah I uh, know how to set myself up for failure and that is if I don't cast on the second sock and then suddenly those needles are in use for another pair of socks and then you know fiasco um, and the last podcast episode you can see my little English double-decker bus there. Uh, the last podcast episode, I was here, so I had done three rows of Christmas trees. And then I did the poll, and I was like, well, <sighs> could have seen it coming, but, uh, and I, I think um, it wasn't really meant as what would you like me to finish for the next episode? But I kind of took it that way. Uh, so yeah, I decided to, <laughs> um, to just, you know, get my butt in gear and do it. So I, I did it. 
I really uh, committed to knitting this. I worked on it um, in the evenings, so usually when I uh, craft, when I knit or crochet in the evenings, I will choose one specific project and work on that the whole evening. Sometimes it doesn't really work out um, because uh, yeah, I was knitting on this and then I didn't have the finished sock with me so I, I wasn't completely sure if how many rows of trees I had done before starting the heel. So I was like, yeah, I'll just leave this now because, you know, Momo was on my lap and, you know, the cat trap, you just, you can't move. So uh, I grabbed another project that was within reach which is a project that I won't be showing you guys yet, because it's secret. Um, but yeah, so, but most of the time I work on one project exclusively, and then uh, I also went to the Creadu craft fair last, last week, last Friday, with Mika, uh, who is Salt and Stone at Knits on Instagram, um, and I only took this project to work on on the train, and yeah. I I had already completed the heel by then and I was up until here when I got home that evening and then uh, the past weekend I have completed the rest. Well, I actually bound off this morning, but I am so happy that these are finished. I am so happy. Um, I mean, I can't even tell you. I feel so accomplished right now. <laughs> uh, yeah, so... So let me tell you about the, the pattern and the yarn again before I forget. And I'll just take my little double-decker bus off. So this uh, double-decker charm, I actually got it from an airport. Was it from London? Yeah, probably was. When I was at the Knitting and Stitching show in Alexandra Palace in London last year, last, uh, last year, October. And uh, I saw these charms on uh, the airport and I thought they're super cute and I can use them as progress keepers. Um, you know, and I, I forget what I used to use this for, like probably on bracelets, but uh, for, yeah, they're just perfect as progress keepers, so I'm really grateful <laughs> that people are still making these for other purposes. Um, uh, yeah, so the yarn, I'll show you. So this yarn, um, so mind you, this yarn has not been in uh, rotation, I mean for for sale for a couple of years because I bought it like four years ago because this project is so old. So uh, mind you, uh, it may not be possible to get the same color again. So um, this is from a Dutch indie dyer, uh, Sylvia, who is a wool met verve, uh, and I'll put the name on the screen, and this uh, was her colorway avocado. I'm pretty sure she doesn't dye it anymore, but she... I think Momo just crashed into something. I'm gonna have to check. Okay, I'm pretty sure that was just a trick to get me downstairs, because she really wants to go outside, because... She cannot go outside, so what's that? Yeah. Um, yeah, so I'm pretty sure she doesn't dye avocado anymore, but uh, she has a loads of beautiful colorways, so uh, be sure to take a look. And the other yarn, I'm so out of breath now. <sighs> and the other yarn is Hatchock Fibers in the colorway Where's My Bike, which was uh, dyed exclusively for Stephen and Penelope. It was their custom uh, colorway, probably also limited edition. But uh, you can get something similar like this, and same goes for this as well. I mean, um, this is pretty uh, basic color, although it's, you know, super beautiful. Oh, can't wait to use this for something else. Um, and this, well, it's just like a light pink with speckles, and I especially love this. Uh, let me just show you that up close. This, there's, um, there's this really 
um, bright greenish blue in there. I really like that. It's only come up a couple of times, like here and there. Yeah, you can't really, there's a little bit, and over there, yeah. But I really, really like how these socks turned out. I will have to block them, because they're a color work. Um, and I think that makes them look a little bit neater. So, oh, but I'm so pleased. I'm so, so happy. And I will be wearing these this, this Christmas. And believe it or not, I've already cast on some new Christmas socks. <laughs> but I'm not doing the same thing again. So, um, it's a much simpler design. Um, I won't show you yet, but um, stay tuned. Those were my first uh, finished objects. Well, finished object. Um, what you probably did not suspect is that I would have a second of that uh, same list. So, um, from the poll. And no, it's not the reindeer. It is the Stephen West Mystery Knit Along, and this is your spoiler warning. Uh, there have been so many photos uh, out there of the Starflake Mystery Knit Along, so I'm not sure if it's still a secret for you, uh, but if it is, just, you know, look away. I'll put the timestamp here where it's safe to look again, um, or to watch again, but um, yeah, look away, because I'm gonna show my finished object. Here it is! Oh my goodness! It's so big! <laughs> yeah, like, uh, I wish I could make this the thumbnail, but I know I can't because then I'll be spoiling it, but uh, that is so funny. I don't know, I'm in a mood today, guys. I don't know. <laughs> um, I actually have a little clip of me showing you the shawl, so I'll put that in now. So as you can see, it's a really, really big shawl. And uh, last time I was about, I was just done, uh, just finished the brioche. And uh, I had just done a little bit of the next section. So uh, what I've added onto it now is the, um, the eyelet rose. Uh, in the main color, which is the the grayish uh, color, and then I've added the uh, striped eye cord, which uh, took me a long while, but it actually wasn't that bad. Um, and I'm so, so pleased with how it turned out. Um, yeah, I just love it so much. I mean, um, and I didn't block it the way I would usually do, so usually I would just really wash it, squeeze, squeeze all of the water out with uh, towels and, you know, use a bunch of towels and uh, pin it all out on blocking mats. Um, but I knew that this shawl is well, it's just so large, uh, I don't have enough blocking mats. So what I did, uh, well first uh, I did wash it and, oh my god, I used this um, soak and the celebration smell, it's so good. Like, honestly, it's so good. Um, and so I washed it and then I put it in my spin dryer, which I have bought second hand. It was only 30 euro, so it doesn't have to be expensive. Um, I bought it for um, when I'm hand dyeing yarns and, you know, I don't want to wait two days for them to dry. So um, so that's why I bought a spin dryer, so it spins all of the moisture out uh, without uh, tangling anything or snagging on, on uh, uh, bits and pieces. So I put it in there, so instead of wet, it just feels damp. And then I just put it on top of my drying rack. Um, so I have a drying rack that opens like this, so you have a little bed actually, and I just uh, draped it 
all over that so um, so I wasn't able to really stretch out I mean I wasn't able to really block it like I usually do and it has done something to the brioche kind of here it's just kind of pulled apart so I actually would have liked that to be more together like that but uh, I might still spray it and just uh, block the edging uh, so I could still do that um, but yeah, and I'm just so happy with it and um, <laughs> I've come to realize it doesn't really match with any of my coats so I'm not sure when I will wear this, but that's with any anything I make from Stephen West. I'm not sure when I will wear it. Um, <laughs> but it was it was so much fun to knit. Um, just I learned so much. Um, as I told you guys last time, I learned so much about brioche. Um, uh, the construction again is just mind blowing, and then at the end with the eyelets. And then these little added on caps. Oh, I just love that. Um, yeah, it just it's just really, really cool. Um, I'm not a big fan of the Christmas star thing at the top. So I think when I wear it, I will just kind of like roll it over, I don't know, or just wear it so that so that I can hide it a little bit um, like this because I do really like the brioche yeah oh and let me show you how my mistakes turned out so uh, last time I told you I made some brioche mistakes and <laughs> I wasn't gonna rip them out um, so where are they you can uh, kind of see this. See there, I uh, made an increase instead of a decrease by accident, and then I decided just to um, to decrease um, to take the middle stitch out. Just just put it on a um, safety pin or something, and take it to the back of the work, and um, decrease the other stitches. I think I could maybe sew that a little bit better in place. Um, so the extra stitch, you can see right there, uh, so I, I just took it off the needles and I've just uh, sewn that into place with some scrap yarn. Um, but it's not as visible from the front it just looks uh, not as neat and then my other huge mistake so well it actually was the same mistake because I also made uh, an increase instead of a decrease but um, uh, because it wasn't it wasn't in a central line like this it's on the edge where it kind of goes you know into this point so I, I thought I couldn't really fudge it like that, so I thought to make a feature out of it and just uh, increase some more and kind of like make it look like a flower, but it doesn't. And um, yeah, but I'm not too bothered. I mean, when I wear the shawl, I will just make sure that part is covered. I'm not too bothered about that. But yeah, it does look weird. I wish I didn't make the mistake, but I did. And I'm glad I didn't rip it all out. So, yeah, I'm happy with my choices. Um, yeah, I'm just uh, really pleased. Uh, and I am so surprised that I got this done in just, just a little bit over a month. Uh, because I started on October 4th which was the first day of the um, mystery knit along and I finished it uh, on Sunday so that was 
Oh, November 3rd. I finish it within a month? That's insane! I'm pretty sure there's still a loose end here somewhere, but I'll check that out. Yeah, so I'm not a fan of this. Yeah, I don't know. But um, I like it nonetheless. And um, as, I, as I said, I really, really like the, um, the progress um, or the process of, um, of knitting a mystery knit along. And it has been really fun and it was actually kind of a relief to open the fourth clue um, uh, pattern and see that there wasn't really uh, that much happening anymore so I knew that okay if it's revealed now I, I'll at least know what it's gonna look like um, because you know in the pattern it doesn't have any pictures or anything um, you know sometimes a close-up but um, you can just read ahead a little bit and you'll see like, oh, okay, it's going to be roughly like this. So then I just uh, made myself look at the spoiler photos. Um, oh, right, because um, the way that the pattern is written for these rows, these gray rows, I would actually um, need to use the pink yarn because... Um, this is actually written for the contrast yarn. Um, but I didn't really want to use the pink yarn for that because I thought having the gray yarn there would ha make it a little bit more muted. And it would make the striped I-cord edging pop a little bit more because if this was all pink, well, and then this would be gray. Uh, yeah, I'm actually going to jump in because uh, what I said wasn't really true. I just, uh, so in the pattern, it says, well, I'm really confused by this webcam. So um, I knit this all according to pattern, but just the last piece, this is uh, meant to be in the contrast color. So just this one. And uh, I did this in the main color, so just wanted to rectify that. Um, then the edging would just wouldn't pop as much. So, and I really like um, how the edging turned out. Uh, it wasn't that bad. Um, I held the yarns like I would do for standard color work. So I held. Um, uh, one color in my left hand, one color in my right hand, and it was actually quite easy. Um, I just, uh, sometimes I didn't know what to do about the floats, because I thought they were kind of, you know, I-cord is really uh, not stretchy, so I had to make the loops really, really big, like unnaturally big. Um, even though I'm a loose knitter, I have to really like tug on those loops um, to make the edging just just nice and flowy. Because I know Stephen West is a really really loose knitter, so um, I I have to you know make everything a little bit looser just so it will have the same drape um, as his shawls do. Um, Yeah. Oh yeah, and the yarn is uh, Twisted Finch. Um, I'll put it on the screen as well. Twisted Finch in the colorways Fossil, which is this gray one, and Kelpie, which is this one. Yeah, it's really cute. This is like a bubblegum pink, but then with um, orange and a uh, kind of like greenish yellow uh, speckles in there. So that was really fun. Um, yeah, I think that's all I have to say about these about the Starflake mystery knit along. Um, <laughs> it's it's huge. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, I just astounded myself with how much I could knit. Uh, if there was a deadline, I mean, and not just just some deadline, but like the 
imposing danger that if you don't knit fast enough, uh, the secret will be spoiled. So it really, it really motivated me to knit this as fast as possible. And I worked on it probably every night. Um, even though I was also working on other project as well that needed to be finished. And I, I did get that finished. So I just, I've just knit a whole lot this past, this past, pff, this past month month <laughs> god i can't speak so yeah and now i'm gonna put it away i'm not gonna wear it for the rest of the episode and um you know because i don't want to spoil the surprise for anyone who hasn't seen it yet so i'll put it away now all right so <laughs> You probably don't believe it, but I actually finished another thing, although uh, this was a really quick thing, so, and it's not knitting or crochet. Can I take this without demolishing anything? Yeah. So, I made a little wall hanging, which I actually really, really like, and there's some un unwoven ends here. But I think I'll just uh, tie those at the back. I think you don't really have to weave an ends. I mean, look, <laughs> look at the ends for my warp. It's dreadful. But um, yeah. So okay. Let me um, let me show you my inspiration first. So I'm subscribed to the uh, Molly Makes magazine, and uh, which issue is this? Issue 109? When is that? I don't know. I don't know which month it was, but uh, issue 109. Uh, and this was on the cover, and oh, I just, I just uh, love it. Yeah, love it. So, I mean, the ribbon, the flowers, ugh. Um, so then, um, yeah, I shouldn't, I shouldn't show you the, um, tutorial, but, um, so this is made by, uh, Waverly Knots. You can find her on Instagram as well. Um, and it uses hand spun yarn. It uses roving, uh, ribbon, um, just, just, uh, it's so nice. Um, uh, but her hoop is hammered copper so like really um luxurious so i wasn't able to find that uh but i was able to find a metal hoop at uh crea du last week um and i have some i don't know if you guys call it this as well raffia which is basically a uh, paper ribbon raffia i don't know and I wanted to use that to wrap the hoop, but uh, I couldn't find it. So, um, because I didn't want the metal hoop as exposed, uh, so I just used some uh, linen. I, it's it's fraying, but I think that's fine. I used two strands of uh, ribbon, one to go around here and one around this side. And I glued it into place here and held it with a uh, clothing pin. Um, or washing pin, I don't know. Um, and then here it's just kind of like hanging on the side. I wrapped the bottom of the hoop first as well, but then I found that the warp w was just slipping out of, out of place, and uh, so I had to uh, undo that. Um, and so then I warped with, oh, I don't know how this is called. It feels like burlap, but stronger. Um, it's it's really really strong. Um, so I'm I'm not sure what it is, but it's just some um, yeah, maybe hemp or something. I think it may be hemp. Um, and then I started with um, this really bulky yarn and just um, making tassels. And then uh, I used some hand spun as well, and some um, sparkly yarn that I have never used, uh, which is uh, Scapius Twinkle, I think. I, I just, I never used it. Um, 
but um, suddenly it had a purpose. Um, and the same with the hand spun, and I love that. Um, and this is some um, roving that I was gonna use for spinning, or that I, uh, it was just a little leftover, I guess. I had used some of it for spinning. So yeah, it's so, yeah. kind of, so this is called a tabby weave, but I've kind of not done it neatly. So that's where it looks really bumpy, but um, that was, um, I meant to do that. Uh, and then um, I did some weaving with some really bulky yarn that I had. It's thick and thin in places. Um, oh, I was meant to do, what was it? Twining? Twining? Yeah. But it didn't really work out, so I just uh, did some uh, tabby weave again. And then uh, with some hand spun again. Uh, and then I wove in the uh, ribbon. So I actually had um, a fabric... Um, yeah, it was, it was a really nice piece of fabric, actually. Uh, really big, and it was ombre, so it would be like really dark gray at the top and really light gray at the bottom. And I just um, uh, ripped a strip from that and used it uh, here. And I just, I love that texture. really nice and then I used some of the hand spun and sparkly uh, fibers here um, on the other side and then uh, another um, some roving and then some hand spun camel um, and then oh and then I put in a twig <laughs> uh, because I didn't have any flowers and I thought you know flowers if they aren't dried then they will fall apart. So I used a twig and then some more of the linen that I have used to wrap the hoop and then uh, some more of the uh, ribbon um, um, that was the other side of this. So this was the lighter end of the same fabric. And I put it on a little string and uh, it, uh, it's up in my, well, not now, but uh, I have a place for, a place for it in my living room, although my boyfriend is really not impressed with it. Uh, he came home and he was like, huh. Uh, but usually he's like really excited about anything I make, but uh, this, he was like, yeah, I just, mm, I, I don't get it. <laughs> and I was like, what's not to get? Um, but, you know each to their own, I guess. Uh, I really like it, for one. I mean, I, I really, really do. Um, the sparkle just gives it a little bit of a Christmassy vibe. Oh, I have fibers in my mouth. Um, and I really like the ribbon as well. It's, uh, it's more moody than I usually do. Uh, so it doesn't really fit in here, but um, yeah, our, our living room is a little bit more moody. Uh, we have an exposed brick wall, a uh, dark green couch, um, dark blue and mustard uh, pillows, and yeah, nice wooden table, so it kind of fits there. So I'm kind of bummed that he doesn't like it. Okay, yeah. But um, yeah, I think I'm gonna hang it in the living room anyway. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, maybe just for for the festive period, right? Maybe just until January or February. Because after that, you know, I need some other decoration, like non-sparkly. Yeah, but this was a really nice just uh, distraction from everything. I did this over the weekend on a Saturday. Uh, actually, the warping, which is you know, wrapping the, the strings from top to bottom. That took a lot of work, uh, a long time. And um, and then the weaving just, um, just, just happened. It went so fast. Um, yeah, and I really like this. So I hope to be doing this some more. I have bought another hoop, although smaller, but uh, who knows, I might even buy a bigger one. Yeah, but let me know what you guys think. Because I really like it.
I have some other things that I have finished, but I haven't, I have never really shown you. So let's just get on to that. So, um, you might know, I, uh, I just briefly mentioned it in the uh, last podcast episode, but I'm doing the Color Word Confidence Masterclass right now. Um, the first two videos have been uh, posted on my Patreon page last Saturday, which was November 2nd, and the, the next video will be posted next Saturday. Uh, so that's uh, chapter three, and then chapter four and five will be posted in the you know, the two Saturdays after that. Uh, so the Color Word Confidence Masterclass is about just um, uh, getting comfortable with color work knitting and um, just getting the hang of how to hold your yarn, uh, which colors to choose, which is what the whole first chapter is about. Because um, you don't want to go through all of the trouble to knit color work, uh, although it is really fun, but it is, you know, it's a little bit more difficult as well. So you don't want to go through all that trouble and then not have the pattern showing up. So so you really want to choose your colors wisely. Um, and I have prepared two swatches for the course. So this is swatch number one and yeah. So we'll be starting from here and then working our way to the top and all of these patterns are included in the uh, Colorwork Masterclass. So you learn how to wrap floats, um, um, meaning how to wrap the longer strands of yarn at the back and you'll learn uh, several ways uh, on how to hold your, uh, hold your yarn. Um, and then, you know, you get to pick what's what's uh, working best for you. Um, yeah, so that's swatch number one. And then uh, the bonus chapters for my Willow and Elder patrons, so that's for the higher tiers. Uh, you, can, you can choose whichever tier um, you want to join. So this is available for the Rosewood one, but as also for the Willow and Elder. So a higher tier will have access to anything that the lower tiers have access to. So this is for the Rosewood, which is just $5 a month. And then Willow, um, for them I have the corrugated rib pattern. So this is all corrugated rib. This is also included for a Willow and uh, this and then for um, um, Elder, I have three color color work, which is always a tongue twister, three color color work, um, which I had, I really had to practice that because this first one is just uh, not as good as the second one. The first one is really, really tight. Um, yeah, so, but I've gotten the hang of it since. Um, so yeah, this is available for uh, elder patrons. So, um, and I've been using these as uh, leg warmers actually, but you can also use them as arm warmers. <laughs> uh, or bottle cozies. Although this bottle is kind of skinny. Um, and you can make them uh, shorter and use them as uh, plaid pod covers, uh, which I think is really cute. Um, but yeah, I've made them too long for that. But Oh, and if you make them short like this, you can also use them as boot cuffs. But I guess leg warmers kind of serve the same purpose, so yeah. But um, I mean, it's just, it's just a swatch, but you can use them, um, which I think is kind of fun. And it will kind of, well, it will prepare you uh, for your first color work um, uh, project. So uh, for the elder patrons, I'm also including a hat pattern um, that I will publish uh, hopefully later this year. Uh, but they'll get it for free and I'll record uh, another set of videos um, just 
me knitting another uh, another hat and taking you all the way through the process um, and I think that will be a lot of fun and uh, I'll include a bonus video on how to um, block color work hats as well because I think that's really fun um, yeah so that is what I have been up to as well like I've been working my butt off for this uh, master class and I'm really really excited with how uh, it has turned out um, so yeah I'm really excited really proud of that um, so yeah so uh, if you want to join in you still can you just uh, need to get uh, onto my patreon page and become a member uh, or become a patron and then you can choose which uh, tier you want to join and then you know you can always um, change your tier so now the rosewood videos are out so you can choose to sign up as a rosewood uh, patron and then you know, when the other videos are published, you can choose to upgrade to a Willow uh, or Elder tier membership. So that's just a little bit of information for you guys. So um, I have some more projects to show, although um, all of the other projects that I'm working on is kind of secret. So <laughs> I've I've pretty pretty much finished all of the things that were in secret except for the reindeer but I haven't worked on that at all so I'm not going to show you um, what I also haven't worked on but I haven't shown you properly is my punch needle pillow in progress so this is going to be the front of the pillow it's the loopy side the fluffy side of the punch needle fabric. You've probably seen this on my Instagram page though. Uh, I made a little um, IGTV video, uh, kind of a time lapse, which is really, really fun. And it has done really well. And while my other posts on Instagram are just not doing really well, uh, and I think that's just Instagram pushing us towards video more. And also, did you know that um, saving a photo in Instagram, so click the little bookmark thing, uh, that, that, that that counts more than likes and comments. So if you really want to support people on Instagram and get their posts, you know, to be seen, uh, you're going to want to click the save icon because that really helps to, um, you know, to get more exposure for that post. Or so I've, uh, I've heard. But um, yeah, I'm I, an IGTV probably, uh, or apparently. So this is the smooth side. Yeah, it looks really nice. But I'm just, I'm going to use the fluffy side as the right side for the pillow. Um, yeah, so here's the conundrum. Like, I, I like punch needle. Um, but... For for uh for me to actually make a pillow out of this, I would need to sew, and I cannot sew. Uh, I can sew by hand, but I'm not sure if I'm gonna want to do that here. Um, so I have the fabric. It's uh, a gray fabric. It's really nice. So uh, that will work really well with this. Um, yeah, but then, you know, I'm I'm kind of hesitant to take it off the frame um, because I don't know if I should add a couple more rounds to the um, to the outer edge because I don't know if if I sew the pillow right so sewists help me out here so if I want to sew this pillowcase I'm assuming that I need to take the right sides put them together and then sew along the side, right? Along the outline. So will I need to, like I don't want this to show. So will I need to do a little bit more? Because I don't know. Or maybe I should take this off crochet around like cut it crochet around it and then ah uh, I don't know I don't know I don't know yeah but I was thinking because I um 
I was asking my mom about this because she has um, sewn a lot of things. Um, and she thinks that I should make the back overlap so that you don't need a zipper or anything. So you have two half moon shapes, right? And then this one, you kind of let it have it until here and the top half you uh, make it until here so that uh, it's kind of like like a proper uh, pillowcase that you use um, you know on your bed that you kind of have to fold the one over the other um, if that makes sense but yeah I think that's a good idea so I think I'm gonna do that and I know how to do that part but I don't know how to sew it together and not make it look weird. Like I don't want to eat up any of the, um, you know, I don't want to eat up the edge here because I, I want this uh, yellow outline. So I'm not sure if I, if I have to do a little bit more of that. Uh, I kind of run out of yarn, but uh, I have some other same-ish yarn that I could use for the edging. Yeah, let me know what you think, because I am really in a conundrum about that. Um, yeah. <laughs> so I wanted to, to ask you guys for advice on that, because um, you guys probably know better than I. And then lastly, I want to talk about my new cast-on. So I haven't cast on yet, but I have swatched and I'm knitting this for the Blame uh, Dunder Knit, um, Blame Dunder Knit Along. Because, yeah, I blame you, Caroline. <laughs> and um, so I even knit a swatch. And yeah, it's in my new colorway, which is Momo. And I will upload the yarn to my, um, or I will have another shop update tomorrow, which is Wednesday. And I just hope I can get this video edited in time. Uh, otherwise, it will already be in the shop, so you'll have to be quick. But we'll see. So tomorrow, Wednesday, 8 p.m. 8 p.m. GMT? Or CET? Mm, I don't know. Uh, 8 p.m. Amsterdam time. So... This is a swatch out of my new colorway, which is Momo, after my cat. Uh, I really do find it really similar. She's just sitting right there. Um, and I am swatching for the Ember sweater. And I am using this combination of yarns. And I really, really like these. So um, these two are my Wool Rami base, which is... 80% wool, 20% Rami, uh, so it's a uh, great sock yarn. It's 300 meters per 100 gram, so it's sport weight. So yeah, nice and thick socks. Uh, it does mean that it's slightly too thick um, for this sweater, uh, so the gauge is not really working out, but I'll figure it out. And then this one is also 300 meters per 100 grams, but it's 100% merino. And all of my bases are non-superwash. And yeah, I really like this. So this is Momo, this is mustard, and this is what's for dessert. Um, yeah, it's a really, really light colorway, and I thought it's not quite white. Maybe I should have named it that, not quite white, but um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. And then I decided to add in these ooh, uh, these little minis from Sandra, who is uh, Craftfulness, uh, who has sadly stopped dyeing, uh, dyeing yarn, but um, I hope she will come back in the future, because she dyed some amazing yarns. Um, so these were in one of her Scrappy Socks pack, and I think they go really well with this. I had picked out some minis by um, Beehive Yarns, but it was just too thin. I couldn't make it work with uh, with this sport weight. And Sandra Suck Yarn is always really plump. Um, so I think I can make that work and I really like it as well. So um, for the Ember sweater, 
I'm gonna try to modify it a little bit because I think the um, the blocks of color are a little bit too big so I want to add in more more colors and you know more color color work patterns so I'll try to um, duplicate some of uh, the, the patterns used um, and I think I was going to go for a mustard oh I might actually because I didn't think it would go with my complexion but um, I actually like it Ooh. okay yeah I might do that anyway so uh, it starts with a uh, ribbing and then a scalloped edge and then uh, the next color and I think I might do that and then uh, on, th on the bus there's a big um, section that uh, has to be in the lightest color so then I'll do that and when I'm in the lighter section I want to add in one of these and then, yeah, <laughs> and then just use whichever color looks good. Um, so I'm really excited for that. Um, so, and this swatch is just dry. So I hope I can um, measure it now. I thought, although I'm pretty sure it's gonna be off uh, because my yarn is much thicker. Um, in the pattern they use a yarn that's 366 meters and mine is only 300 so um, per 100 grams and I think the uh, gauge was 26 stitches per 10 centimeters and I had 24 with the recommended needle size and then with the size um, smaller I had 26 although after swat after blocking I'm gonna have to see if that's still correct um, and as you can see I did a little purl line in between um, the needle sizes so that's that's how I know uh, where to measure so I thought that was a little um, it was a, um, a great tip I picked up somewhere um, and of course I swatched in the round and I do that by casting on as if I were knitting a sock so with Judy's magic cast on uh, and I cast on just enough stitches so uh, she said 27 stitches for 10 centimeters so I cast on 35 just so I would have how many stitches is that eight stitches extra so four on each side yeah should be safe um, yes so that's how we do swatching in the round so I hope it's gonna work out and otherwise I'll just have to fudge it a little bit because I do want to use this yarn and uh, if the gauge doesn't work out I'm just gonna see which fabric I like best and I'm gonna have to take it into account that you know the sweater is gonna be in color work so it's gonna be a little bit more dense so if I'm not sure if I want to go for the three millimeter uh, because well it is nice it is nice maybe three and a half is a little bit too too stretchy but I have to take into account that with color work it, it'll get a little more dense um, yeah so that'll be fun <laughs> figuring that out but uh, yeah I can't wait to actually cast on um, and I'll be able to take it on my trip because next Saturday I'm taking a trip to uh, Switzerland with my mom um, to see my aunt. Uh, we'll stay there for a couple of days and uh, I want to have a fun knitting, knitting project with me because it's just going to be a few days of self-care and we're going to do a fun little workshop there. Uh, my mom is going to take uh, macrame supplies. Um, she has macrame in the past but I have never so I'm really excited for that. Um, so yeah it's going to be a fun couple of days so I really want to take a project for on the road because it is a few hours of driving uh, and I'll do some of the driving but not all of it so 
yeah, so that's my upcoming knitting, knitting stuff. Um, as I said, I did cast on for my next uh, Christmas socks, um, although I won't be sharing anything about that yet. Um, I do also have a shawl on the needles that I will, if I finish it in time, I'll be sharing it with you guys soon. It's a new upcoming pattern and I'm really uh, pleased with it so far. So I'm hoping to finish it soon. Um, and that's about all I can share. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. It probably is a bit of a long one. Uh, yeah, <laughs> but I did have a lot of a lot of things to show you guys. It'll probably be a while before I have that many things to show you, uh, especially considering all of the secret stuff uh, that's going on. But you know, um, I do really, uh, I mean, the secret stuff is just, you know, it's a lot of commissions. So a lot of stuff for magazines and, you know, they have a publication date in God knows when, so I can't talk about it yet. But, um, you know, that is a part of being a uh, knitwear and crochet designer, and uh, I do love it. I just, you know, I always have to save my enthusiasm for when the um, pattern actually gets published. Although that's not that's not difficult because then seeing it in print and seeing it photographed it just is amazing so uh but i just have a lot of those projects going on right now um and yeah for the rest it's i'm i'm doing good i'm doing good i mean uh i've been working for myself now for six weeks um and it's been good it's been really great <laughs> Um, but you know, I can't, it's funny because I can't tell you if I've made any progress, uh, because I'm working on all of these long-term things and, you know, I just have to wait and see. So, uh, but I'm really enjoying the ride so far. So, and I hope you are too. Um, yeah, and as always, a huge thank you to all of my patrons who are basically making this happen that I can, you know, stay home, work on, work, work on my designs. Um, I'm really, really grateful and I hope you are enjoying all of the extra content that I can offer you guys. So the uh, Colorwork Masterclass now and I have a couple of fun videos lined up. So... I just hope you guys enjoy. If you want to uh, support me as well, then please uh, go over to my Patreon page and see if uh, any of the rewards speak to you. Thank you all very, very much for watching, and I hope you have a crafty couple of weeks, and I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye!